Right, so I shall have like fluid. Welcome back to After Years. Yes, we're still on holiday near Rochelle. And if you remember that uh, we left Angus and Kegar down by the uh, beach doing some interesting things, we assume. But we went with Rowley on a bit of a walk and we ended up at a lake. So let's pick things up with where we left Welks and Rowley last time here. And so a few solid minutes later, 225, 226, 227. Hey, I'm back. Hmm. Blinded by the sunlight filtering through the trees, I rub my eyes and look at the panther. Whoa. Whoa, what? You're glittering. Come again? You're... Covered in some weird powder that glitters. It's all over you, especially on your face and shoulders. Confused, Rowley glances down at his shoulder, then at his arms. What the? What is that thing? Curious, but also a bit frightened. I get up from my seat and thoroughly inspect his glittering forearm. Interesting. And it is what this thing might be. I can see you also have it in your hair. There's a short pause where I'm able to come up with an answer. Honestly, I think it's just salt. Salt? Well, I can't say for sure, but just think about it. The water in the lake was uncharacteristically salty, right? After we got out of the water, we didn't rather use a towel, but instead just sat down the blanket and let the sun do the work. So what happened is... The water droplets evaporated in the heat and left traces of salt on our fur. Bingo! Mystery solved. This is not salt, but actually some highly radioactive cosmic powder, and we just gain superpowers. I grin and finger again, point at him. <laughs> Get real. Also, since when are you into superhero stuff? Um, you can blame Kekar for that. Ah, right. Checking quietly, Rowley wipes his face a few times. Did it come off? He then asks me, while looking at me and slowly tilting his head to left and right. Uh, no, not quite. He's out of all over your muzzle and forehead. A noisy scrubs then presents his face again. Unfortunately, a lot of glittering spots that he missed. You know what? Let me take care of that for you. Without waiting for his response, I reach up both hands and begin to gently rub his muzzle and cheeks. Spot after spot, one stroke after another, the tiny crystals start to slowly detach from his fur, sprinkling on left and right. Just a little longer. I'm almost done. <clears throat> it's alright. Take your time. This uh, it actually feels kind of nice. It does? I'm sure you're going to say something like, man, this is so embarrassing or something. <sighs> I didn't say it's not. And yet you're not protesting. Wearing a sly grin, I shift my hands on top of his head. I then bury my fingers in his hair and begin to slowly move them in a circular pattern. Hmm. Let's say I don't mind it, as long as it's you. I see, I see. If you like it that much, you maybe I could scrub the rest of your body too. The panther lets out a quiet sigh. I knew it. I knew you were going to suggest that. Can you blame me though? Huh. I know you've never had a boyfriend before. No, not really. Embarrassed to look to my side. So, can I? You know, for the science. Asking that, I slowly slide my hands down his cheeks on his broad shoulders. Um. Fighting a smile, he looks back at me, then down at the ground. Is he actually considering it? I ask myself in my head. And just as I, th as I thought he's about to back off, looks me deep in my eyes and says, well, I would like that. F for real? Well, I'm not sure about you scrubbing my entire body, but it's only one of my getting a bit of help my upper half. Then almost like jolted back to reality, clears his throat and shoots me a stern look. It's better stay between us, all right? I have no word, you're a good buddy kegger. Are we clear? Yeah, of course. Everything about today's adventure is going to be a secret. I give you my word. 
Good, good. Without further ado, Rowley crouches in front of him and flexes his right arm. Well, then, you can continue from here. Hart raised and looked back at him. The scene looked so awfully familiar that for a moment I'm starting to have flashbacks to that weird dream I had the other day. I swear, if I suddenly wake up in the hotel room again, I'm going to straight up jump off the balcony. Hey, what's with the holder? I have all day for this, you know. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Hot and bothered, I wrap my hands around his forearm and slowly but methodically begin to scrub it, moving further and further towards his biceps. Whoa, your muscles are rock hard. <laughs> what did you expect? I, I don't know, never had a chance to be this close to another man before, as you already know. Right, my bad. Aroused, I give his biceps a few more squeezes, eventually shifting my hands over his shoulder and continuing scrubbing the remaining spots of salt. At the same time, to my surprise, Rowley buries his spare hand in my hair, although it definitely feels more like he's just petting me rather than helping me scrub the salt off as well. Still, I love every second of it. Okay, now it's time for your chest. Sure, go for it. Hearing his approval, I move my hands down on his massive pecs. Despite there have been only a few glittering spots located mostly on the upper part of his chest, I move my hands along his entire pecs, occasionally and accidentally bullying his nipples with my thumbs. Which, to my surprise, results with a rather strong reaction from the panther. <sighs> mm -hmm. You seem to be very sensitive here. Uh, yeah, I kind of am. Does it feel good when I touch him like that? He gulps loudly. Uh, <clears throat> maybe a little. <laughs> good to know. Feeling my burning cheeks, I shift my hands on his left arm. And just like the last time I start with scrubbing his hand, then moving further to his forearm, and then further to his biceps. Hey. Can you flex your arm again, please? <laughs> sure. He gladly fulfills my wish by dramatically flexing his muscles, almost like he was a professional bodybuilder. Happy? You know it. Almost drooling, I give his biceps a few firm squeezes. Mm -hmm. I could do that all day. Enjoy while you can. For as much as I have fun petting his biceps, eventually I move my hands over his shoulder and finish the job by scrubbing off the few last spots of salt. And done. Well, thank you kindly. Do you want me to do your back next? He shakes his head in response. Well, maybe later. For now, let's switch. Saying that, he lifts me up, and I cannot notice the faint, but only smile that slowly draws on his face. My fur is so nice to touch. He almost whispers to me as he buries his fingers in my chest fluff. Flustered, I chuckle nervously in response, and the momentary silence falls between us. As much as I want to say something, anything really, feeling the warmth of his touch, of his hands moving all over my front, I am simply unable to focus. What's wrong? Not being too rough, am I? I shake my head and smile. No, it feels good. Really good. Oh, truly? It got all quiet again for a second, made me worried. Let's say that I'm just enjoying the moment. <laughs> gotcha. Smiling wryly, continues cleaning my front. This time his touch is a bit gentler. Sensual, even. Lost in a moment of bliss, I close my eyes, I feel his hands gliding all over my chest, then my shoulders, then my arms. This sweet trance, however, gets soon interrupted as he suddenly grabs me around my sides, then quickly slides his hands up towards my armpits. What? <laughs> no, not there! I'm... Uh, ticklish? Wearing a sly grin, he moves his hands down my sides again to give me a moment to catch my breath, and then quickly back up to tickle me some more. Yeah, Rowley, <laughs> stop! <laughs> uh, you wish. Consider it a payback, you vicious butt-slapper. <laughs> Pl 
Okay, please. I can't breathe. <laughs> Laughing hysterically, I fight back, trying to get away. But before I know it, I find myself pinned down to the ground. Chests heave and we exchange looks in silence. <sighs> Ready for more? <laughs> no, please, I'll be good. I promise. <laughs> uh, yeah, right. The panther grins mischievously. It's only a matter of seconds before his hands are going to slide between my exposed armpits once again. Think well, can think. You need an escape plan. There was, however, no way for a small guy like me to force myself free from this behemoth's firm grip. I could only distract him somehow, I think to myself while looking around. My legs are still free. Maybe I could pinch his tail between my knees. No, that's stupid. It might accidentally hurt him doing it. And again, I could try to pinch then try to jank off his towel instead. With enough force it could come loose and fall down. Why are you smiling like that, shrimp? What are you planning? I smug. I'm looking to spoil the surprise. And so, smiling deviously, I press my legs together to trap the loose part of his towel between my knees, then vigorously twist my side to jank it off. Huh? The result? Not exactly what I planned as I wasn't able to make his towel drop on the ground. It did, however, come loose enough to reveal his, to my surprise, fully erect. Whoa! Whoa! Taking him back, Rowdy lets go of him, covers his heart on with both hands in a flash. Well, I'm free, but in the light of the current situation, I'm nowhere in a hurry to escape. God damn it, Walkin! Well, well, it's not my fault you got so excited. Or is it? I mimic the thinking face emoji with my fingers while looking at him with a wide grin. Huh, don't flatter yourself. Flustered, he corrects his towel. Then, after a moment of indecision, he takes a seat next to me. Um, so... <laughs> yeah? He crosses his arms and shifts in his seat. You want to scrub my back or something? I shrug, a little surprised. Well, I could do that, yes, but, um... We could also do something much more fun, since you're clearly in the mood. I flash in my best smile. Well, this is nothing. Come on, don't deny it. There's nothing wrong if you feel that way about me. You know that, right? Oh, I know. He lets out a heavy sigh. Still, uh, there's a line we shouldn't cross. What do you mean? I shoot him a curious glance. Oh, I'm afraid if we do, then you'll only get even more attached to me. And I... Uh, I can't really promise you that this is something I'd like to have with you in the long run. Yeah, I see. Then found it, I bit my lip and low my head. It's the second time today my world crumbles around me. So, yeah, it's not that I don't like you, because I do. I really do. It's just... If we let things go too far, you'll probably only end up hurting them. I don't want that, nor do things get awkward between us. Agitated, I shake my head. Don't worry. Where is this going to take us? I'll always be your friend, I swear. Wait, so you actually would like to give it a shot? I'd be crazy to not to. I wink at him, do my best to stay cool and collected. Besides, you'll never know until you try, as they say, right? Who knows? Maybe you'll change your mind about a thing or two once we get to know each other more intimately. Hmm. Sending me a warm smile, he gently ruffles my hair, then slides his hand along my cheek. Well, you're certain about it, then. Well, let's do it, I guess. But one step at a time, OK? <laughs> sure thing. We'll play nice. Actually, you can be in charge if you like. I don't mind. A little flustered, Rowry scratches the back of my head. Are you sure you'd like that? 
Well, I do like being ordered around by you during our workout, so... <laughs> I see. We well, can keep that attitude, then. Excited, I shift myself right next to him. So, what's on today's agenda, coach? I wiggle my eyebrows. Hmm. He looks back at me, wetting his lips. We still haven't finished cleaning each other, so we could start with that. Sounds good to me. Well, then. He gets out of a crouching position and turns around. You can start by scrubbing my back like you wanted. Roger that. Bursting with excitement, I put my hands on his shoulders and begin to slowly clean his back, spot after spot. To make things a bit more interesting, I occasionally perform a bit more refined movements with my hands, just like yesterday when I was giving him a back rub. <sighs> Feels good? Yep. If you like, I can give you a proper back rub. Hmm, damn it. But you still have a lot of work to do. If we're talking about your back, it's all clean now. Ah, in that case... Letting out a quiet grunt, he gets up into the standing position. One time I towel and do my lower half. Surprised, I take a second to process what he just said. Um, sh sure thing, coach. Hands shaking, I grip his towel and carefully take it off, slowly uncovering his bare butt right in front of my muzzle. Start from the very bottom, he then orders me in a tough voice. <laughs> Save the best for last? Uh, perhaps. That's fine by me. How meticulous I should be about these parts, though. Hmm. Be as meticulous as you like. Not wanting to procrastinate any longer, I get down on my knees and wrap my hands around his ankles. In a smooth, continuous motion, I then begin to move my hands back and forth, slowly going to his calves and occasionally even higher to his tights. Taking my sweet time, I quietly repeat this process a few times, as long as I'm ready to move to the next area. <sighs> that sure was an interesting experience. You can say that again. But hey, you still need to get off, right? Do you want me to? Ah, he interrupts me mid-sentence while reaching out for his backpack. Are you sure? Don't worry, I'll let you play with mine some other time. <laughs> Does it mean that this wasn't just a one time thing? I wiggle my eyebrows at him. Hmm, I wonder. Smiling Riley passes me a pack of tissues, which I gladly take. Thanks a bunch. Still trying to catch my breath, I thoroughly clean my front. Occasionally glancing back at Rowley, seems to be unable to take his eyes off me. Despite everything said and done, I'm still having trouble to get my grip on the whole situation. Regardless, I'm hopeful this is really only the beginning of something much bigger. So? So? What now, coach? Want to swim some more? He glances at the lake with a frown. Oh, I should probably head back soon. It's already past lunch, if I'm not mistaken. Hungry much? I sent him a playful look, turning on my side. Oh, oh yeah. What for? Lost in thought, he furrows his brow. A oh, fish. Hmm, a fish, you say? Do you know any good restaurants? I actually haven't been out in town yet. I nod vigorously in response. I think I know a pretty chill place near the port. I'll take you there. Uh, cool. Lunch on me. Whoa, for real? You're the best coach. Huh. I just want to make sure you eat healthy. George fully picks up his towel and gets out from the blanket. But anyhow, let's get dressed already. Come on, get up. Uh, all right. Can't tell you're more upset about that we have to go or that we have to dress up. Both equally. 
How did you like the experience, by the way? Swimming naked outdoors, I mean. He scratches his cheek. It wasn't bad. I was very sceptical at first. I thought it silly. But there's this bizarre feeling freedom about it, and it felt oddly good, you know? Well then, perhaps we should plan a trip to the real nude beach after all. Uh, no, absolutely not. But then he adds after a short pause. I uh, wouldn't mind coming here with you again, though. Noted. And so, just like that, after dressing up and making sure we packed everything, we take one last look at the picturesque lake and get back on the forest trail. I didn't like nothing had happened. Later that day... <sighs> it's good to be back. Hey, do you think Angus and Kegger are ready back from lunch as well? Hmm. I texted Gus some time ago, but he didn't respond yet, so it's hard to tell. Ah. Uh, should we go and check on them or something? Yeah, I think we should. We still need to plan the move between the rooms. Oh, right. Uh, good call. Uh, which number was your room again? Uh, 202. It's this way. Pumped up, I knock on the door. But as the laughter inside the room ceases, I'm starting to have second thoughts. If coming invited was such a good idea. You know what? Uh, let's forget it. I'll just text them later. Also, you've been so impatient today. I'm not being impatient. I just thought that maybe they're busy at the moment. Too busy to move their asses and open the door. Saying that, Rowdy bangs loudly on the door, almost like he was a police officer coming in with a warrant. Hey, it's us. Open up. I just a sec. I'm coming. Hearing the lion's muffled voice, Rowley takes a step back, and just a short moment the door swings open. Okay, sorry to delay. Hey, Kega, uh, can we talk for a moment? Yeah, sure, come on in. Feeling a bit uneasy, I step inside the room and wave a quick hello to Angus, who sits stiffly on the bed. Sorry to barge over that invitation. We just got back from town, I thought we should drop by and say hi. Yeah, it's cool. We were just chilling. Right, Kegar? Clearly nervous, the lion responds with a quite yup, while simultaneously shoving something into the bed with his leg. Ahem, uh, so, uh, how's your day so far? You two been out for lunch yet? Aye, well, I can find a really nice restaurant that poured out a grilled fish. Ooh, a grilled fish? Mmm, so it with french fries and a side salad too. It was so, so good. Next time I have to go there together. Seriously, that place is amazing. Oh, sounds good to me. Yeah, it does sound good. Be nice to finally eat something that's not a pizza. <laughs> then it's settled. On that note, sorry we couldn't join you today and, well, for disappearing the beach without a warning. The wolf lets out a quiet sigh and smiles faintly. Oh, that's fine, don't worry. Gagar kept me company. We had a lot of fun together. Well, I'm curious though, what were you two doing the host whole time? I certainly eventually you're going to show up again, but you disappeared for good. The moment his sirens kicks in, as neither Rowley nor I come up with an answer. What, is that supposed to be a secret or something? No, he just went for a long stroll. His voice trails off into awkward silence as he shifts uncomfortably in his seat. We just had a lot to discuss and we kind of lost track of time. Aye. Uh-huh. I've seen anything interesting along the way. Rowley shakes his head. Oh, not really. Just some weird lake, that's all, really. Anyway, wasn't there something we were supposed to discuss with them? 
He shoots me a quick glance. All right, right. So here's question number one. Is everyone still on board with the idea of the move between the rooms? The three of them look at each other. Well, it seems like it. Yep. Well then, here's question number two. Are you guys free now so we could take care of it right away? Angus grins wide and bounces off the bed. Yep, let's get it over with. <laughs> Alright then, I'll start packing right away. Do you want me to help you out, Wilkes? I shake my head cheerfully. It's okay, I've got this. And okay, so I'm off to two and six. You're coming, Gus, right? Yes, let's go! Hey, hey wait up! <laughs> I wish I had at least half of that guy's energy. Oh, same. Uh. Anyhow, are you sure you don't need a helping hand? Oh no, thank you. Pretty much half my stuff is still in my suitcase, so I'll be ready in a flash. Ah, okay. Without further ado, I open the closet and begin to lazily toss my clothes one after another back into the bag. And as expected, it didn't take long for us all packed up and ready to go. You know, I'm actually going to miss you having, miss having you as my roommate. <laughs> you mean it? Of course, it was fun and... Kind of weird to see you like this in a whole new light. <laughs> I know what you mean. But hey, now with Angus around, I'm sure things will get even more interesting. Wink, wink. Speaking of, how are things going between you two? Yeah, pretty good, pretty good. Seeing him smiling and blushing, I put away my suitcase and take a seat on the bed next to him. You're not going to share anything more than that with me? Yeah, I don't mind telling you a thing or two, but what exactly do you want to know? Well, there. Obviously, I want to know what happened at the beach after Rowley and I left. Did you actually, you know, skinny dip with him? Hearing my question, the lion covers his face in embarrassment. Oh, I did. And not only that, we also sunbathed naked afterwards. Wow, really? And how was it? Did you like it? Pensive, he scratches the bridge of his nose while staring blankly at the ceiling. Thinking about it now? Yes, it was a fun experience. Back then I felt super weird, and despite the two of us being there all by ourselves, I was still nervous as hell. Why? I don't know. It was just really awkward and I had trouble speaking freely with him, or even to look at him. Thing is, in the beginning he was very upset about the two of you leaving without saying a word. He's really looking forward to hanging out with you as well. And thankfully, after some time passed, he lightened up a bit and became more talkative. Ah, uh, I see. Are you also upset at me for leaving so sudden? Ah. I mean, it would definitely be more interesting if you stayed. At the same time, I really grateful you gave me this chance to spend some more time with him one-on-one. -on -one. I nod in response to the momentary silence falls between us. I'm sure what else to say. I look back at him, but Kegar still seems to be completely absorbed by his own pondering. Almost like he's replaying the whole thing in his head. Judging by his soft, wry smile that draws on his face and how he keeps on blushing, it can only seem that something spicy had happened between them. Was there anything else, apart from swimming and sunbathing, that is? There's a short pause for he turns to face me, as he's wavering how much he should share with me. Well, we mostly just sit in the sun and chatting. He did, however, help me put on a sunblock, and this time... He bites his lower lip. And this time? This time he, uh... Not only helped me from my back, but on my front as well. Wow. <laughs> you let him play with your belly? Um, not only with my belly. Wow. Taking it back and narrowing my brows and looking straight in the eyes. You're not pulling my leg, are you? No, it all happened, I swear. Him touching me gave me a hard-on. I gave him a hard-on, and then we both agreed we need to do something about it. Lots of words, I wrapped my hands around my neck in excitement. So you jerked each other off? A little, yeah. <laughs> what do you mean, a little? 
Uh, I was too nervous doing such thing in the open. So we agreed to save it for later when we were back in the hotel room. And you did? Well, we were getting to the zone, but then you two came to check on us, so... Uh, God damn it, I'm so sorry. I had a hunch or two you might be able to say something spicy, but it was too late to back off. That's cool, really. Don't worry about it. They had a heavy sigh, a forced to smile and take a moment to process what I just heard. My thoughts, however, soon get interrupted as we hear the sound of a door opening. Well, I'm back. Angus, perfect timing. Oh, why is it so perfect? Also, why are you two sitting so close to each other? Asking that, he wiggles his eyebrows at us. What, you're not jealous or anything, are you? Me? Jealous of you or Welkin? You tell me, mister. Hmm. Hmm? What's wrong? Can't quite your tongue? Hey, you leave Rowdy out of this. Unable to hold it back any longer, I burst out laughing in their ongoing banter. <laughs> it's so weird to see Kegger acting so bold. It's always shy and secure around new people. Whenever he's around Angus, it's like he's a completely different person. I can't help but wonder, is this the real keg or finally got out of his shell, or an imposter who's just played on to match the wolf's wavelength? Hey, something's wrong. You're so quiet all of a sudden. Jolted back to reality, I shake my head. Oh no, just thinking stuff. It's nothing important, though. Uh-huh. That look on your face says it all. You're already regretting your decision of moving out. Um... No? <laughs> Why should so much change your mind? Feel free to return. Enough of space in the bed for the three of us. My thoughts exactly. The line finger gun points at the wolf and the two of them share a laugh. Same wavelength indeed. Uh, I'll keep that in mind, I guess. At any rate, time for me. Have fun with you two. Oh, come on, little bro, can't you stay a little, little bit longer? We barely talked today. I force a smile. Yeah, it's true, but no worries, I'll make it up to you tonight at the bar. <laughs> you better. When exactly do you want to go there, by the way? Hmm, I'm guessing 8 o'clock. Would that be okay with you two? Both Keke and I nod in agreement. Well, at 8 o'clock in front of the hotel it is. Alrighty, I'll let Rowley know. He's coming too. He is? Uh, yeah. It's not a problem, right? No, of course not. I'm just surprised. Seems to not vibe well with that place when we were drinking there the last time. Yeah, there's something we'd like to discuss with you two, so I'll convince him this is going to be a good moment to do that. The wolf tilts his head. What do you guys want to discuss with us, exactly? We think we're going on a trip tomorrow, to Nesseburg to be precise. And by we, I mean all four of us, obviously. Oh, I like the sound of that. Yeah, it's just um, pretty exciting. Great, we'll discuss the details during the meeting. At the same time, if you guys have something else in mind, let us know too. We can always bring some some more, etc, etc. Alright, we'll give us some thought. Sure, why not? <laughs> cool. With that arranged, I get up from my seat and reach out with my luggage. Anyhow, I'll be going now. This suitcase won't unpack itself. Yeah, okay. See you later, Welkin. Yep, see you later, guys. Feeling a weird mix of emotions, I give the room one last look for opening the door and stepping outside. For some reason I feel a little sad, and I don't know why. It's not like I were attached to this room or anything, I think to myself. Why do I feel this way then? I keep contemplating as I slowly walk along the empty hall, dragging my suitcase behind me. And then it finally hits me. What's troubling me is this lingering feeling in the back of my head that in only a few days I will have to say goodbye to this place for real, and by extension to Angus and Rowley. Thinking about it makes my heart heavy. But at the same time, it only further convinces me that time is of the essence. 
to make every day count, every hour even, I quietly say to myself as I reach out my hand and open the door to my new room. I'm going to leave after years there for now. It's uh, been quite the week, so this is a slightly shorter video than I'd otherwise put out, but uh, we'll definitely be getting back to after years before too long. It's very interesting stuff coming up. And yes, there was a lot going on in that fade to black, but it's not something I can put on YouTube. So head to Witchio and uh, find after years. You can find out what happened in all the details for yourselves. And also while you're there, you can also check if uh, Turving has the Kofi link there. I can't remember, I will put it in the uh, description of the video, so you can always go and support After Years and Turving through there, which I really have to pop back in sometime and uh, throw some more money at this VN. Speaking of throwing money at VN-related things, I have to say thank you to all my patrons and my donors on Kofi. And my top patrons, as always, I give a special mention to they are Kartek, Cobus Visser, Bastion, Brian Hall, Tiger Cub, Ida Corval, Dissonance, Grizz, Spiderling, Kopi, Sindri Dragowolf, Evan King, Exabk, Aaron Fox, Mohamed Al Zamel, Matt Kenya, Mario Cervantes, Rafu, Bieka, Harvest Mouse Productions, Nova Starburn, Omar, Smutu, and Andy Peng. A special mention to all of those. A special thanks to those who actually work on VNs and give me something to do. I can't remember exactly what the next VN is going to be next weekend, uh, next Sunday as I'll be running D&D Saturday, but I'll look it up. And uh, Wednesday there will be the start of the Yalmach Chronicles, which is a story by MC Murado, we'll be recording that then, and back to the VNs on weekends as usual. So until then, thanks for watching, bye for now. <laughs>